Joe Biden has been running for president now for about three or so weeks, and he has already said numerous things to piss off various groups of people, unsurprisingly. But what I want you to realize is that this is not something that is a new phenomenon for Joe Biden. It's not like he has recently become a, a gaffe machine. He has always had a penchant for saying things that don't go over too well, making dumb, insensitive comments and saying things really that, generally speaking, as a politician, you might want to keep to yourself. So to give you an example of this, back in the day when he was first getting into politics, he talked about how his first instinct was to sell out and try to court big donors. Take a look. See, I went to the big guys for the money. I was ready to prostitute myself in the, man the manner in which I talk about it. But what happened was they said, come back when you're 40, son. Spoiler alert, as you all know, he went on to actually win over big donors and he already won them over for 2020 because if you'll recall, when he launched his 2020 campaign, who was it that held a fundraiser for Joe Biden? A Comcast executive who is against net neutrality. These big donors, they're not just holding these fundraisers for Joe Biden because they like the way that he speaks and they think that he has leadership qualities. The reason why they're trying to win over Joe Biden is because they want him to carry out their policy preferences. So if a Comcast executive who is part of a company that lobbies to do away with regulating the internet, net neutrality, how do you think that's going to impact Joe Biden? He's going to be influenced to pick up the phone if they call. And you don't have to take my word for it because Joe Biden actually explained very thoroughly back in 2008 the effect that big donors have on politicians. Listen to what he says here. Lobbyists aren't bad people. Special interest groups are not bad people. But guess what? They're corrosive. People who accept the money from them aren't bad people. But it's human nature. You go out, Lynn, and bundle $250,000 for me, all legal, and then you call me after I'm elected and say, Joe, I'd like to come and talk to you about something. <laughs> you didn't buy me, but it's human nature. You helped me. I'm going to say, sure, Lynn, come on in. So he explained there very specifically how big donors get people to be on their side. It's just human nature. They help you get elected, and then in return, you want to return the favor. You want to pick up the phone when they call. That's who Joe Biden is. So who do you think he's going to listen to if he gets elected as president? You or the Comcast executives who threw fundraisers for him? Now, you don't have to look very far because just last year, well, this is what he had to say in response to millennials who were vocalizing their problems. The younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. No, no. I have no empathy for it. Give me a break. So when millennials want him to take our issues seriously, his response is give me a break. However, if a big donor gives him a call. You didn't buy me, but it's human nature. You helped me. I'm going to say, sure, Lynn, come on in. So what you need to understand is that Joe Biden is nothing more than a conduit for special interests. And if you elect him, you're not even electing a person. You're electing an empty suit. You're electing a vacuous vessel that will be filled with the policy preferences of special interests. He's not getting in there because he has this vision for America, because if he does, he certainly hasn't articulated that vision. He's getting in there to the, do the bidding of his big donors. And you don't have to take my word for it. That's... What he says happens when you take money from big donors. And if he knows the influence that big donors have and he thinks that that's corrosive, you'd think that he would instinctively not take their money. Do something like Bernie Sanders because he has a big enough name. He has enough name recognition to where he could plausibly fundraise based exclusively on small dollar donations. But he's choosing not to do that, knowing that these big donors will affect his views. So he's someone who doesn't have a spine. He really doesn't have seemingly any underlying moral philosophy. And he also has made horrible decisions that didn't just lead to more corruption, but led to death and destruction. Because Joe Biden, let me remind you, is someone who voted for the Iraq war. He came from the administration that turned Libya into a failed state. He just recently greenlit Donald Trump's meddling in Venezuela. And he has the instinct 
to do really horrible things. And we know this because when he was talking about North Korea before, look at what he said. If we have evidence that they are building a missile defense, a, a missile system, an offensive system with a nuclear capacity and they will not negotiate with us, I would support a unilateral strike to take them out. So in the event North Korea were to develop defensive nuclear weapons, I mean offensive nuclear weapons, as they did, he is admitting there that what would be on the table is mass genocide of North Korea. War crimes. Because he knows that in the event they were to develop nuclear weapons back then, it would be obviously for defensive purposes. And they did end up developing nuclear weapons for defensive purposes. And it's kind of been working at dissuading the United States from getting involved directly because they know that that would threaten our ally in South Korea. But what Joe Biden would have done is commit a war crime in North Korea. He said that in the open. He admitted that he would do something like that. So he has the instinct to do bad things without thinking about the consequences and commit war crimes. But it shouldn't surprise you because he actually really has an affinity for war criminals. So why wouldn't he want to replicate their strategy? And I'm not joking about that. This is what he said about Dick Cheney. I actually like Dick Cheney for real. I, I get on with him. I think he's a decent man. Dick Cheney is a war criminal who should be rotting in prison until the day he dies. But Joe Biden thinks he's a decent person. So if he thinks that Dick Cheney is a decent human being, then it's not going to surprise you to learn that he also thinks that a vehemently anti-gay theocrat, Mike Pence, is also a decent person. It was followed on by a guy who's a decent guy, our vice president. The point that I'm trying to make here and showing you all of these clips is that Joe Biden can't help himself. He is constantly putting his foot in his mouth. And this is by no means a comprehensive list. We didn't talk about Anita Hill. We didn't even talk about his history on segregation. We didn't talk about the comments he made just last week where he said at a rally that he didn't have time to talk about healthcare or college. So what I'm trying to communicate to you is if you end up going with someone like Joe Biden, if he faces off against Donald Trump in a general election, understand what you're doing. You are nominating someone who is a liability because odds are He'll say something dumb during the general, piss people off, and then they won't want to vote for him. And then we get another four years of Donald Trump. And Donald Trump, in spite of all of his gaffes and stupid statements, has a 90% approval rating from the Republican Party's base. So he can say stupid things and that won't hurt him. But the same is not true for Joe Biden. If he says something stupid, that could theoretically end up hurting him. So the point is, if you nominate Joe Biden and you don't like Donald Trump, you're playing with fire. Now, again, it's not just that he said all, these, all of these bad things in the past. He keeps saying stupid things. For example, just this last week, this is what he said when it comes to climate change. According to Valerie Volsevici of Reuters, presidential hopeful Biden looking for, quote, middle ground on climate policy. So just pause for a moment and think about what that looks like. What is middle ground when the middle ground is between Democrats who believe in climate change and Republicans who literally believe that climate change is a hoax manufactured by the Chinese? How do you possibly get middle ground between those two concepts? One party wants to take action, even if it's meager action, but action nonetheless. They believe in anthropogenic climate change and another party doesn't believe in climate change at all. So even if you meet them halfway, they're still winning because they're getting you to not take action that is needed to stop climate catastrophe. So as Reuters reports, Democratic presidential hopeful Joe Biden is crafting a climate change policy he hopes will appeal to both environmentalists and the blue collar voters who elected Donald Trump, according to two sources, carving out a middle ground approach that will likely face heavy resistance from green activists. The backbone of U.S. policy will likely include the United States rejoining the Paris Climate Agreement and preserving U.S. regulations on emissions and vehicle fuel efficiency that Trump has 
sought to undo, according to one of the sources, Heather Zickel, who is part of a team advising Biden on climate change. She previously advised President Barack Obama. The second source, a former Energy Department official advising Biden's campaign, who asked not to be named, said the policy could be supportive of nuclear energy and fossil fuel options like natural gas and carbon capture technology, which limit emissions from coal plants and other industrial facilities. A spokesman for Biden's campaign, T.J. Ducklow, declined to comment on Biden's emergent climate policy or his advisors, but said Biden takes climate change seriously. Joe Biden has called climate change an existential threat, and as vice president was instrumental in orchestrating the Paris Climate Accord, Ducklow said in an emailed statement. So let's be extra charitable here. In the event Joe Biden were elected and he rejoined the Paris Climate Accord, would that be an improvement from Donald Trump? Obviously, that would be the case. However, back in the day when Obama signed on to the Paris Climate Accord, it still didn't go far enough. And there were numerous small island countries who protested because it didn't go far enough. However, times have changed. We now have more data available. The IPCC just last year said we have 12 years to take substantial action in order to avert climate catastrophe, in order to stop a two degree Celsius increase from happening. And Joe Biden, in trying to seek out middle ground and just doing what we did before, which wasn't enough, that's terrifying. Because what that means is if Joe Biden is elected president, we very well may not actually be able to save the planet. We may take incremental steps towards limiting greenhouse gas emissions, but by and large, it's not going to be enough. So this, obviously, is another thing that pisses off people and would make him a liability because climate change is a, is a very serious issue. And if you don't put front and center a really bold and ambitious policy, what do you think is going to happen? Young voters, millennials, Gen Zers, they will be dissuaded from voting because you've got to understand voting is a chore. People don't want to waste hours waiting in line, coming out to vote for someone who they think will be just nominally better than Donald Trump. So a lot of the time they stay home. And I don't like that this is a reality, but it is a reality nonetheless. There's a large portion of voters that don't come out to vote. And what he's failing to realize here is that young voters, they can often make or break elections. So by not taking an issue that we care about seriously, he's proving what a liability he'd be against Donald Trump. Give me a break. So Joe Biden would be potentially a disaster if he won the nomination. And liberals currently should be doing everything in their power to defeat Joe Biden. Because if he wins, this is a lose for progressives and potentially a win for Republicans.